Okay, so far we have covered how to determine if a digit is a significant figure in a number, and we've covered the two most basic rules for performing calculations using significant figures, for addition and subtraction, and for multiplication and division. Now I'd like to talk briefly about a special rule for exact numbers. So, when a number is exact, and I'll mention what that means in just a moment, it doesn't limit the resulting calculation. Because this number is exact, we do not look at how many sig figs it has in it, for example. So numbers are exact when one of two things has generated the number. They're exact either because they have been defined as a specific number, or they are the result of counting individual objects. So this is the two ways that we can get what's called an exact number that does not limit us for sig figs. So here's an example of a number that has been defined. 60 minutes is the definition of how many minutes are in one hour. Well, if we use the rules that we originally learned, we would say that that number only has one sig fig in it because that zero is trailing and there is no decimal in the number. And then we would base any calculations that we did on the fact that that number has only one significant figure. However, this is a case where the 60 has been defined as exactly 60. And I could just as easily have written it with as many zeros as I wanted. So that six zero, 60 in 60 minutes per hour does not limit my significant figures for calculations. Another example of a, an exact number is when we have counted individual objects. An example of this might be the number of people in a room. Now, if someone just told you that there were 10 people in a room, you would not necessarily know how they got that number. It might be an estimate. And that's why I was saying earlier that if you don't know where the number comes from, then the trailing zeros in a number without a decimal, they are treated as if they are not significant. However, if you know that that number, number 10, is the result of someone going in and individually counting every person in the room, then we know that that number is exact, because it's the result of counting objects. And then we would say that both the 1 and the 0 are significant, and any calculations that are based on that number are not limited for sig figs. So that's what I was saying earlier about having to use your intuition sometimes to determine when a number is exact for example, when it's been defined, or when it's specifically the result of counting individual objects. If you don't know if it's been defined, or the result of counting, then we treat it as any other number and use our other rules. And we just assume that it is not necessarily exact. Now there are other examples of this especially when we get into metric conversions. And we'll go over the additional examples when we begin to do those conversion calculations later.